Hey everybody, hope you're doing alright. Um, today we're going to be talking about the French Revolution and Napoleon. Um, don't know if you've had a chance to read the abstract yet, but basically it talks about the French Revolution starting in 1789, um, it ending, and then we have Napoleon growing in power, and um, that's kind of where we're going to pick up is Napoleon and his power and the way that he was looked at. Um, First, we're going to kind of look at like how the revolution was perceived. Was it perceived as a failure or a success? Um, we had a few sources. The first one that we're going to look at is the Baron Trevoy, um, uh on Southern Peasants. Um, he was a really diverse in his opinion. Um, he kind of thought um, that he could see the the good influences from what had happened with the peasants, but then again, he could also see the um, negative aspects in which he talks about on page 202, where he says something about, you know, this land that he lived in or lived around. Um, there was a lot of complaining of seizures and clearances of this land. Um, and so while the government was still in charge, we had the repression of um these lands not being seized, but now um, we just have, we had, uh, since the revolution, it kind of released the break on that is what it says, and power, they were powerless against the anarchy. Um, and then we looked at another source called the Marquise de la Tour de Pin on her family. I cannot pronounce these, so just cut me a break here. Um, but... What we're looking at here is, um, this is a rather well-off um, family, and she talks about the feudal rights being abolished. This happened, um, I forgot the actual date, I want to say it was like September 4th or August 4th, something like that. But anyways, um, she talks about it being, them being abolished, and it really affected her family. Um, she talks about how, like, all of their income was based off of, um, these, like, feudal taxes, pretty much. So she, um, she mentions the amount of, uh, taxes that they got from different places and how since the war had ended, the, this has just been in decline and her family has just been plummeting ever since, pretty much. Um, so you see a really negative aspect from her. Um, and obviously, so, so we're looking at, so far you have these peasants that are really, their life is improved, but these, uh, nobles and, um, higher up in the feudal system, they're really dropping in quality of life. Um, there was another text that we looked at, um, talking about the inflation of like the, the money during the time it was. Um, really dropping and led for opportunity for this one lady to really open up her own shop and start selling stuff She says that if you put it up for sale, it would most likely be bought and um, this is what she done. So uh, She was it was effective for her and you see um, the good for her and um, How she saw the revolution uh, Ultimately, I think really the way you saw the revolution was just based on um your place in the in in the feudal system for one um, uh, your ability to see advantage of, and find new uh, opportunities um, that presented themselves and then the last one was kind of where you live too um, we see those in the sources that we looked at um, then we look at um, the viewpoints on how people looked at Napoleon. Was he a dictator, a hero, a mixture of the two? Uh, once again, I would say that he was definitely a mixture of the two. Um, there's a few sources that we looked at here too. Um, George Sand, I think it's actually a lady here. I've never met a lady named George, but uh, good for her. Um, but she talks about her grandmother and her grandmother was not a fan of Napoleon. Did not like him at all. She said, um, she actually quoted, and he was an ambitious man without peace of mind killer, uh, p 
peace of mind, a killer of men, a despot by character more than by necessity. Um, so she just didn't like him. Then you had her father, who actually, I think he was in the army of, in Napoleon's army, and he was really, especially in his later years, really came to like Napoleon. Um, and he couldn't really explain why. He just said, um, it, quote, there's something I don't know what apart from his genius, which forces me to be moved when my look encounters his. So he was just a dynamic person and captured people. And so um, you see mixed feelings about Napoleon just inside of this one family, which is really interesting. Um, I think it categorizes what people thought or didn't know what to think about Napoleon. Um, another text we looked at was um, on Napoleon and the Empire was the name of it. Uh, there is a quote in it that said, he was not bloodthirsty, but he was an indifferent uh, to the life of men. He only considered the life of a man as a means of attaining his object objective. So, once again, you got like, he's not necessarily a bad guy, but also... He didn't qual. Um, he didn't put any quality on life. So, like, is this a compliment or is this a complaint? You know, people were really confused of what to think of him. Um, now, he definitely had um, some dictatorish qualities. I would say, um, looking back at, I think these were texts from Tuesday, um, but the uh, there was a decree limiting the French press. Um, that he put into place um, in 1800. So that was pretty f soon after. Um, but he was like making, he was deciding what was going to be printed and what was not. At one point, I think it said, the text said that there was, um, there was only four newspapers that were being put out. Um, Napoleon on governing. This was, uh, I thought this was really interesting. He's talking to his son-in-law. And he's telling him to how to execute government and what to say, things not to say. Um, and he tells him not to trust anyone. Um, and is like, speak seldomly. He says only speak if you're, if you know that you're the pretty much the smartest one in the room. Um, and then he tells him that he wants him to report to him every day of a detailed account of what happened, what he's, you know, what's going on and everything. So he's really controlling. You see that in the text that he writes to his son-in-law. But you also see, like, the qualities of what he thought made a good leader because he's really wanting, from what I got from the text, was he's wanting his, his son-in-law to really pick up on this also. But um, this is uh, covers most of the sources that we looked at. Um, we had a couple questions. Um, the first was, according to the sources, the writers perceived the revolution in a variety of ways. What do you believe influenced some of these perceptions? Um, we looked at that a little bit. Um, I think some of these perceptions, once again, I, I talked about, were influenced by the place you lived, um, the ability to find new opportunity, although it was different, and your placement in the feudal system. Um, that's really kind of what I saw um, to answer that. And then Napoleon portrayed characteristics of both an oppressive dictator and a heroic liberator. Use the sources to compare and contrast the differing viewpoints of Napoleon as a dictator or a hero. Um, so we looked at that also. Um, a lot of his dictatorish qualities was obviously the oppression of the, the press. Um, and, um, the detailed accounts that he demanded from his, his son-in-law telling him what was going on. Uh, he wanted to be really in control. He talked about Napoleon, like called, I forgot how many meetings, but it was like tons of meetings over these, these people and wanted, um, and left his footprint really on like the, the governmental system. Um, but you also had some heroic, um, things about Napoleon that really stuck out. 
he seemed to be really dynamic and um, he led a country for or pretty much was a world power for like 15 years so you know you had to be captivating someone and some type of heroic characteristics in order for people to allow you to do that but um, y'all have a good day uh, don't catch the Rona or else the Corona will get its lime. So see you later.